Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider. I am thrilled to be with the cast of Mayans here at Comic-Con. Uh, gentlemen and lady, how are you guys doing? Beautiful. We're great. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. I have a, a ton of questions for you guys, and uh, but I guess I want to start with, I love learning about like the behind the scenes of the making of a series. So for fans of Mayans, what do you think they would be surprised to learn about the actual making of the show? Mm. I, I think just how much time goes in um, with the crew and, and especially the stunts. Um, you know, if I'd pick an episode, th that first episode in, in season four, yeah. um, we spent uh, about a week and a half yeah, on yeah. night shoots. Yeah. And uh, our stunt coordinators uh, just really, Phenomenal. you know, planned everything out. E everything was so specific so that we could create the kind of tension that we needed for that episode. Because when you're filming, you don't have a lot of time. Right. Uh, so you got to have that prep so that come in the day, everyone's going. We're all firing on all cylinders. I'll say something real quick. Sure. I, you know, I think uh, fans and the audience, they forget. They don't not they forget. They they're not really cognizant of the craft behind what we do sometimes. You know, I think especially specifically with our cast is like, you know, it, it, it looks and feels so real, you know, because it is. But they forget that, like, we're acting right. We're not actually these individuals. And I feel like, you know, when I'm in public or JD's in public, I think they forget that, like, we're not these characters that aren't that are on TV. Right. We're actually normal human beings that aren't bikers and gang members and, 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 and club goers and stuff like that. So I think that's the biggest thing that, like, for me, in my opinion, the audience forgets, like, this is not real life. You know, it, it's a craft. It's a craft. Oh, God, I would say uh you know what? I, I binged the show also recently. I just like did it like uh, from the start once again, just like all the way through 10 episodes. And it's, you know, it can be harrowing. It can be dark. Um, and I just want everyone to know how much joy we actually right. get making this show. Like, you know, it's it's not a it's not a comedy, although there's wonderful comedic moments. But as a whole, like, I just feel like it's a joy to be on our set. It's like a very happy place, yep. surprisingly, for like how how. Um, a mystical sort yeah. of the the episodes are it's darker shows yeah yeah I agree I'm gonna piggyback on that. Yeah, I, I find that I, you know, whenever I have to answer a question after you, <laughs> it's like you're the stealer of thunder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you are the thunder Typical. stealer. Uh, but I think I agree with you. I think it's what I think people might be the most surprised by is how funny everyone is on right. set. I mean, we take it incredibly seriously, and like JD said, there's not a lot of time, but there's an awful lot of laughter between right. takes and after takes. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we need like a B-roll, so right, right. Steve, so that you can just see how funny we really are. We're very funny. So one of the things about this show is characters die. And I'm so curious. See, that's hilarious, right? It's not, so funny. See what I mean? Wow. Not, see? Wow. What I'm funny. curious about is, because you really don't know as you're watching if a character might be exiting, especially after this last season. What is it like for you guys reading scripts? Are you ever looking at a script and saying, I, mean, I think you'll survive, but everyone else is fair game in terms of you never know. So what is it like reading scripts? Are you sort of like looking at them carefully or do you think you'd be told by like, you know, people involved that, like, hey, you're not going to make it? You know, I think, uh, I mean, look, most of the time you, you, we do find out, you know, we know, we know what's, what's going on. Um, and you know, it's just the nature of the beast, right? It's a, it's, um, Elgin James, we really pride ourselves in, on telling the truth, albeit a, a very cinematic and it's entertainment and we're dramatic about it. You know, we had that, that dramatic license, um, but in this kind of world, in the, the criminal underworld, there are the stakes are high, you know, and there are consequences for it. And I we all know that we knew that going in. Um, and you said that, you know, I you're sure that I'm going to survive. Well, I always had the mindset too going in that I could possibly go. Sure. You know, you just never know, because at the end of the day, it's about Mayans and what serves what serves the show. And I, I think that we're all servants in that way. You know, we all we all give to, to the show so one of the things about the last season is the trajectory of easy how early on do you think he was aiming to be president was it something that he was looking at because it's been very interesting watching his transition from entering the club to this last season i mean he got brutal yeah. and i'm just curious when do you think it all flipped for him in terms of the where he wanted to go well you know elgin and i really we we spent a lot of time talking about this even even like from the beginning 
about how easy was the kind of guy who wherever he goes, he can't help but take the leadership role, not necessarily because he wanted it or, or, or aims for it, but because that's just who he is. So the past seasons, he's he's always been one foot in, one foot out, you know, because he's had this resentment, this regret of, of thinking that his life was supposed to be something different. And until recent events and then seeing what was happening to the club, he finally stepped into his place. And that's probably a very hard thing to watch, a hard thing to understand, because sometimes when you do take that leadership role, it's not about making friends. It's about doing what's best for the group. And you're going to have people who understand that and people who don't understand that. And right now the Mayans are at war. And so it's about survival. So to answer your question, it was probably this season mm. where in talking with Alvarez and constantly saying, we're at war, we're at war. What are we going to do? And then seeing a man who was more about his family and easy understanding, oh, that's great, but that does not work for us. So I have to step forward. One of the things that has been interesting is the they've been talking about the fact that you're all related for a long time and the finale or who's that? What? Who are you speaking of? The the show. You know, I mean, who's all related? Oh, the three of you guys. Oh, interesting. Right. I'm not, I'm not familiar yet. Yeah. <laughs> the information I haven't heard of. Thank you very much. Uh, I was like, what are you? Uh, what are you talking about, right. sir? So what, yeah. what I'm curious about though is how. Um, uh, talk a little bit about what that means going forward for the show, because it's been something that's been toyed with and talked about, but not really, you know, the, the realization has been, you know, the uh, the curtain's been pulled. I mean, how do you react when your greatest adversary, mm. adversaries could be your only blood relatives? Wow. I mean, that I think that's what Elgin does so well. I mean, it's Shakespearean, it's Greek mm. in you know, in its scope and. You know, to be able to still be uh, grounded and human and, you know, to be able to really breathe into those stakes that I think given anybody else would would be melodramatic. Mm -hmm. But Elgin uh, raises it to that poetic level while still grounding it to, you know, the stakes of these these people who need uh, support so badly because they're in such dire straits, whether it's, you know, violence or you know backstabbing or whatever it might be uh seeking power uh that the people who they need the most could actually be their their biggest enemies making a show like this you obviously have action you have character moments you know, long dialogue scenes for each of you what's actually the stuff you really love doing on set and the stuff that you're like oh when you see it in the script you're like that's going to be an effing day uh, can i answer this please uh so my favorite things as far as like filming is um anytime i have a scene with uh, jd i think uh, you know, obviously our characters were brothers, but I just think with, you know, with JD as a person and me as well, it's like, it's, it's, there's just a symbiotic fucking just tempo that we have with each other right now. And it's, um, as far as acting, I can't, I've never been able to replicate or duplicate it because it's, this is rare, the, the type of uh, chemistry that our characters both have. Um, so that's something that I really, I'm very uh, appreciative of. And it's not something that, again, like I said, it's not something that you always uh, come across when you're acting. Um, for me, the, the worst part is when we have these long days when we're doing physical stuff and we're running, um, especially in the boots that we wear. I have the worst shin splints. Dude, I get the worst shin splints. And I'm taking five Advils and I'm still in pain, crying, but I can't show any of that. So that's my worst this day. This dude's soft. I'm He's so soft. soft. Dude. I'm so soft. Yeah, soft. it's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like ice cream. I didn't want to say anything, but I heard rumors. Yeah, yeah no, well, you're right. If you heard rumors of me being ice cream, that's me. Right. Uh, fair. Oh, oh uh, you know, this year, Emily's been very removed from all the things we've known about the show thus far, be it like Santo Padre, Santa Madre, like the the, uh, the, t the town, the Galindo house, like all these things that we've, we've, we know and love. And now she's been pared back. She's been removed. And there's, it's two pronged. It is both it's so enjoyable for me to create that isolation for mm. Emily and that um, that reduced life that she, you know, that castle on the hill to this to this level of um, impoverished freedom. Mm. Uh, and simultaneously, I don't get to work with these lovely actors. Mm. Yeah. I am mostly for this season. I am alone with our glorious crew and thank goodness for them. <laughs> but I, I don't get to 
I, no. I miss doing scenes with y'all. It's always next season. Yeah. Always. I, I think I think the season maybe sets up the finale. Maybe sets up a, a, a different version of the show. Steve, uh, do you know something we Steve, don't know? You're talking. Are, as are, if are you, you just know dropping know knowledge on us right of, here? Of, uh, Listen, I, I'm what we call a TV fan, ah, and I have watched yourself. a lot of television, and I think that the separation of the season leads to a. You know, it's pretty, uh, it's fair. pretty, yeah. you know, fair. I think fair. the four of you are going to be doing scenes together in the mm. not so distant future. Fair. If fair. you haven't started. Congratulations, everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Nice to see you, sir. Thank, right. thank, thank you very much. You. I have to wrap, though, but when do you start filming again? Are you? What are you and thank you, Steve, for your time. Yeah. This has been a great time here at Comic-Con. <laughs> uh, thank our fans. That was a really watching. good slider. You tried to oh, show Steve. without you. Woo, Stevie. And uh, yeah, anything you want to say? No, uh, no more. I want to say we both have black nails. So rad. Well, I, I listen. I'm a I'm a big fan. I knew you were going to do it, and I said to 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 show my fandom, I will also do my nails. There you go. That's <laughs> actually not true at all. I know, but, no, but, but I love it. Could no, be. I appreciate you moment, making him feel good. Yeah. I feel yeah. really listen, good. I I also appreciate you guys each giving me five bucks to make him feel good. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> right on, man. Right. I um, mean, hey, listen. Uh, for all the people that uh, have not actually watched Mayans, I give it a really strong endorsement. It's a Oh, I almost cursed. It's a very good show, and I I agree. I love the like Shakespearean, uh, like you know it. It's up and down. It's left and right. And uh, anyway, thank you so much for coming thank in. You thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you to the fans too. Thank you. Thank you.